In this video, I will show you how to make a Stroop effect test in Scratch. This is a famous psychology experiment where participants are supposed to read the font color of a word, not the word itself, out loud as quickly as possible. You can do an experiment to see if this takes longer, when the font color and the word match, and when they do not match. And while you can do this by handwriting or printing out colored flashcards, since there are so many possible combinations, it can take a long time to make all of those cards. So instead, it can be faster and more convenient to write a computer program that randomly assigns the words and colors each time you click a button. In the rest of this video, we'll be taking a look inside the program to see how it works. Now, as you can see, this program is pretty advanced and kind of long as far as Scratch programs go. So if you are new to Scratch, this might be a little difficult to understand. If all you want to do is make a copy of the program so you can run it yourself and change something simple like the number of trials, you can do that by following the link in the video description to the written instructions on our website. Let's start with an overview of how the program works. When I click the Start Timer button, the program is going to start running a timer and set the number of trials to zero. After I click the Start Timer button, it disappears, and my two remaining options are to click on the Matched or Non-Matched buttons. If I click the Matched button, it will randomize the list of words and the font color will match the word itself. So brown is spelled in brown font, etc. If I click the non-matched button, it will randomize the list of words and also randomize the colors so each word is printed in a different color. It will never be printed in its own colors. You can see if I keep clicking the non-matched buttons, the word and the font color are always different. Whereas if I go back to matched, again, the word and the font color are always going to match. It will keep doing this until I reach the preset number of trials, which in this case is 20. And then when I click the stop timer button, it will show my total elapsed time. The start timer button will then reappear, giving me the option to start a new trial and repeat the test. There are five different sprites I'm using to make this program. One for the words that get displayed on the screen, and one for each button. We're going to start with the buttons because the code for them is much simpler. They each have a when this sprite clicked block. I'm going to zoom in so you can read the code a little better. That will broadcast a message when that button is clicked. They will also have a when I receive a message block that programs certain behavior like showing or hiding the buttons. Remember that instead of showing all four buttons on screen the entire time, I have it so the start timer button only appears at the beginning, and then the matched and non-matched buttons appear until you reach the maximum number of trials, then the stop timer button appears, so that makes it a little clearer to the user which buttons you should click at which point during the program, but technically it would work if you just left them all on screen and didn't bother hiding them. So if I go through the other buttons, we will see similar code where each one broadcasts a message, and then has some code that executes when it receives a certain message like start or stop. The main part of the program is really in the code for the word sprite. And we see that this code is broken up into four sections depending on which button is clicked. The code for when it receives start and when it receives stop is relatively simple. We do things like set the initial number of trials to zero, and show or hide the timer variable, but the code under the matched and unmatched messages is much more complicated, and this is the code that is generating that random list of words with matching colors for the matched button and non-matching colors for the non-matched button. So this is really the meat of the program and the most complicated part, so now we're going to go through this in a little more detail. To do that, first we are going to look at the costumes I've created for this sprite. So Scratch does not actually have an easy way to print out text in different font sizes and different colors. It's not really like a word processor in that regard. You can use the Say block under Looks to print text out on the screen, but you can't change the size or the color. So to generate these words with different colors, I actually had to create a bunch of separate costumes for this sprite. So I started out just making one with the text red 
and setting the font color to red. Then I made a copy of that. You can copy a costume by right clicking and selecting duplicate, change the color to green, then blue, then purple, then brown, and so on and then change it to the next word. So this is all the same sprite. I don't have different sprites for each word. It is all one sprite with a total of 25 different costumes. So I have five words and five colors. So there are 25 possible combinations. If we look at the code for the matched button first, then, then my objective is to generate the words in a random order each time, but only pick from the costumes where the color matches the word. So if I go back over to my costumes for the matched button, I would only ever use costume one, where red is printed in red, costume seven, where green is printed in green, and so on. I would never, for example, use costume four, where red is printed in purple. So this one is a little simpler, but I also need to make sure that I only use each word once. So each word should only appear once in the list. Red shouldn't appear twice, purple shouldn't appear twice, and so on. To do this, I need to generate a unique list of random numbers, which I will later convert to the costume numbers representing the words. Because I only want to use each word once, it's no good if a number appears more than once in the list. This means I can't just generate a list of random numbers because I need to check for duplicates. One simple way to do this is to generate a random number. Then, generate another random number and check if it is equal to the previous number. If it's not, then keep going and generate a new number. Now I need to check if it's equal to either of the two previous numbers. I do this and keep going, but if I run into a match where one of the numbers has already appeared in the list, then I need to pick a new random number for that slot, again, compare it to all of the previous numbers, and keep going. As you can imagine, this process gets kind of inefficient and can take a while, especially for longer lists. A faster way to do this is to start with a list of numbers and randomly select a number from the list to assign it to the first slot in your new list. But then I'm going to delete the number from the original list. For my next slot in my randomized list, I only select from the remaining numbers in the original list. Again, deleting each number after it is selected. This ensures that each number can only be used once, and I just repeat this process until I've completed my randomized list. Well, I'm not going to go through every single line here. That's what the code under the when I received match block is doing. I am starting out with a list of available words, which is actually a list of numbers one through five. I then randomly select an element from that list to assign to a new list called words. However, after making that assignment, I delete the number I picked from the original list available words. So this list shrinks as I add more numbers to my new list, just like I showed you in the previous animation. This ensures that every number, which again is going to correspond to a costume for my word sprite, only gets picked once. After generating that randomized order, I then am going to use the pen stamp command, which is an add-on that you can add if you don't already see it in your list of blocks by clicking this button and selecting the pen extension. And I am going to use a loop to cycle through the different costumes and change the position on the screen to create a stamp for each costume, which is how I can see five different versions of the sprite on screen at once. Now, I mentioned converting the numbers one through five to a costume number. How you do this depends on how you have your costumes set up. So I generated a list of random numbers one through five, but when I showed you the costumes earlier, remember that for matched words and colors, I only want costumes one, seven, 13, and so on. So this is an equation that converts the number one through five to that corresponding costume number. You could avoid using this equation by populating your initial list of random numbers only with the costume numbers that you wanted. Either way, ultimately it works and ensures that again, each word only appears once when I click the match button here, but each time since it's using random numbers, it's going to put them in a random order. 
The code for the non-matched button is similar, except this time I need to generate two lists of unique random numbers. One for the words and one for the font colors. I also need to make sure there is no overlap between those lists or individual elements that match. So I never want to print blue in blue or brown in brown, etc. I always want to make sure the font color is different from the word. So here I have two initial lists, one for available words and one for available colors. Again, these lists are actually numbers one through five that will correspond to the costume numbers later. I then have the same code that I had for the match button where I am assigning a randomized list of words, deleting each element as I go from the available words list. And then I have similar code for the colors where I am picking a color from the list of available colors except I have an additional check this time with this if statement to make sure that I am not picking the color that corresponds to the word. If it does, then I need to try again and pick a different color so I don't have a match. So that is maybe not the most efficient way to do that. If you have a better way to do it or a faster way to generate two lists of unique non-overlapping random numbers, please go ahead and remix this project and leave a comment and let us know how you did it. One potential way to deal with that is again related to how you handle the costume numbers. So depending on how you populate your initial list of things to choose from, for the non-matched button, you could avoid the costumes that have matching font colors and words. So for example, populate an initial list that does not have costume one or costume seven in it at all. That is not how I have the code structured here. Again, I am using just numbers one through five, which I then later on use an equation to convert to my corresponding costume numbers one through 25. But again, maybe you can do that differently. If so, please figure it out and let us know in the comments. If I scroll down to the end of the code here for the non-matched button, you see I have similar code to what I had for the match button where I am using some move commands and stamping and switching through costumes to stamp those different costumes on the screen so you can see all five words at once. If all of that seemed complicated, remember that again, you can just use this code as is. You can change the number of trials or make simple changes like the appearance or layout to some of the buttons. You don't really have to mess with all of this random number generation code. But again, we're interested to see if anybody can improve this and make it more efficient. You can also use this for a science project. You can find instructions for that linked in the description of this video on our website that will tell you how to set up human trials to do this famous psychology experiment and compare the amount of time it takes people to complete this test using either the matched or the non-matched features and looking at the difference between those two settings. For instructions for more science projects, you can do with Scratch, as well as computer science projects in other languages and over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering. Check out the rest of our YouTube channel and our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.